I'm Jeffrey Goldstein. I'm a healer. I'm an intuitive. I'm an empath. This is my story. I'm telling you the story in order to instill a sense of hope. So uh, I grew up in New York. I grew up in Brooklyn. I'm 59 years old. I grew up in a very tumultuous, very dramatic, very um, abusive household. I, uh, I was very traumatized as a child, truly. I, I really never had a childhood. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't really have a childhood. I was uh, empathically picking up everyone's energy. And there was a lot of rage and there was a lot of... Um, hmm disappointment and a lot of anger and a lot of fear and um, limitations and etc. And I was picking all that up and I didn't really know how to deal with it. And um, I didn't have any uh, anyone to trust to say, well, how do I deal with this? Um, so by the time I was 22, I got sober. That tells you something already because I was putting myself in really, really, really destructive um, situations and relationships and dangerous, et cetera, et cetera. And I was very, I really, I didn't want to be here. I didn't want to be here on any level. I, I didn't I, I didn't want to be Jeffrey Goldstein. I didn't want to be uh, in New York. I didn't want to be in my family. I didn't want to be anywhere I was emotionally, mentally, physically. I just didn't want to be period. Um, so I got sober. It really, really helped me a lot. It really helped me a lot. Um, they really taught me how to live. They gave me a lot of tools. They listened to me. They loved me before I could love myself, truly. So that really helped me a lot. <clears throat> that was 1986. Um, now, by 1990, I, you know, I still had a lot of the trauma that I, I, I didn't know how to deal with. I, I dealt with it as best I could. I used the tools that I could, but I wasn't able to access all the tools because I still had um, resentment. I still had feelings of betrayal and um, abuse, guilt, shame. <laughs> And so by 1990, what, what was happening is that I got sober with gay men and like half of the population died. Half of the population died. And at the same time, my mother died. So I really fell into a, a very dark place and I was able to stay sober and I'm really grateful for that. But there was a lot of um, un unresolved um, trauma and issues and guilt that I, I didn't have the tools for. And in the mid nineties, I met this guy. I, I, I was acquainted with him already and he did the spiritual healing stuff. And I'd be like, you know, whatever I, I, you know, I didn't go in with a good attitude. Okay. But I was like, well, what, you know, I, you know, I've done more for less. So, um, I went in and I remember the first day on his table, I was laying on a massage table. And I closed my eyes and we brought in some angelic energy and stuff. And uh, and then he started touching me, you know, and I like I turned to blue smoke. It was like it was like a fabulous acid trip. It really was. So anyway, I, I uh, utilized the services for about, I don't know, two or three years. And then it was I don't know, it was like I got what I needed and I, it was time to move forward. And I'm really grateful for it. And then in around, and then I started going to therapy again around, I don't know, somehow in the late nineties. Also in the late nineties, I went to school, I went to FIT, really helped me a lot, gave me a lot of confidence, uh, taught me some skills, but it really gave me more confidence than anything. It was like, it was already there and it, and, and it um, encouraged me. And I graduated in 2001, and in 2001 was when 9-11 happened. When 9-11 happened, 9-11 was like, I fell with them. Because, you know, I grew up in Brooklyn. Uh, 
the, the Brooklyn today is very different than the Brooklyn that it was. And um, like Manhattan was the only place for a gay boy to go. Like I could be myself a little bit more. And, uh, and I remember when the Twin Towers went up and it, they were the tallest building in the world and I could see them from where I lived in Brooklyn. I lived really way up. And it was like Oz, it was like my Oz. And when they came down, I came down with them. And I, you know, went to school and I put all this effort in and nothing was happening. And so I went to a um, sort of this family of origin workshop uh, healing thing. And it really was like deep, deep psychological stuff all came up. And it, it really, really helped me. I mean, it took a long time to like process the information to be able to utilize it. And I, I was able somehow all of a sudden to um, not put up with abuse and not put up with um, a lot of, a lot of behaviors and a lot of um, situations that I'd been in in the past that I didn't know how to get out of, in, in, you know, until I utilized some of the tools there and that really helped me. And then uh, a couple of years after I graduated from school, around 2000, uh, oh, what happened was I, I had a roommate and I was completely obsessed over him and I'd do anything to make him love me. So, but you know, it's interesting what I, what I realize now is that the love that I was seeking from him was really the love I was seeking for myself, right? I thought that, oh, if he loves me, I'll be perfect and everything will be fixed. And, you know, I won't ever have to deal with anything ever again. And, you know, all that. And um, anyway, I stopped smoking. I started dying because if I, I had so much energy that if I didn't uh, start doing something with my hands, I would have killed him. And intuitively, it said, you know, use your hands, do something with your hands, make something. So I started making t-shirts. I started making all these like hand-dyed t-shirts with like occult and mystical symbols because I wanted to ignite people. I was always so busy trying to fix everybody else that I didn't have time to fix myself because I was fine. And uh, anyway, I, I sold to, to this one store in Chelsea. It was like kind of my mainstay. And it was out of that store that I got a lot of other stores and blah, blah, blah. But I also worked there. And one day this guy walks in and I put on a soul show for him because I'm really good on putting on a show. And he really was digging my show, right? And then he came back and he's like, oh, I have this shirt and I want you to dye it. And I was like, okay. But, you know, part of me is like, what do you want? So <laughs> I dyed the shirt and I gave it to him. And then he came back like a week or two later and he had these like these, uh, crystal bowls. And um, he did a healing on me in the store with like other people around. Other people got it too. The sound healing. Really powerful. And, you know, it's like when the student is ready, the, the teacher will appear. Anyway, he showed up and he's going to be a guest on my uh, channel. In any case, this guy really helped me. Like, I can't even tell you. Um, he would have these guided meditations and... Um, so I would go to these guided meditations really regularly. Um, I, I left out the whole meditation thing, but I'll get back to that. Uh, so we started doing these guided meditations, calling in angelic energy. And what happened was a miracle. That's what really happened. A miracle happened for me. I, like my, my heart opened up. My heart opened up. And I, I really allowed like the energy really of the divine mother, like of Guadalupe say, and, and the, the angel energy in, and it, it completely opened me up. And um, this gentleman, his name is Roger, Roger Ancinelli. He, uh, he taught me IET and IET, is a really, really, really powerful, powerful, powerful healing modality. And what it does is, because it goes through your whole body, you know, it releases uh, limitation, separateness, fear, guilt, shame, resentment, powerlessness, depression, 
abuse and it and in in uh embeds it embeds uh worthiness love joy support um a sense of self a sense of confidence trust uh the ability to express love the the ability to receive love it's as if the pieces of myself came back to me it's as it, not as if the pieces of myself that i'd hidden away, came back. That's what happened. So now I'm at a place, you know, I'm reinventing myself yet again. And, you know, I've been trained in IET and I've been doing IET. I've been administering, let's say, IET for, uh, I don't know, a couple of years already. And this is where I, this is what I'm being called to do. I'm being called to help other people who really want to go on the journey of self-healing, of self-love, of permission, permission to be their authentic self, to heal the trauma, to move forward, and to be the best them, you, we, that we can all be. So um, I'm putting together packages um, that will be either on a monthly or a yearly basis this is where I'm being led to, you know, to serve. Um, so, uh, you know, it would include meditation, guided meditation videos. I could also do clearing with a pendulum where you can clear, you can um, realign your chakras, you know, get them in working order, release, um, uh, cut cords with unhealthy relationships, cut cords with unhealthy uh, attitudes uh, bring in clear blocks clear blocks so you know blocks or sometimes it's not just from this life you know because the thing is uh, like therapy has helped me enormously because it helped really to help me to know what my issues were right um but sometimes sometimes you just work it out like in your mind's eye but you're still holding the energy in your body so it clears the issues from your tissues basically because sometimes you're holding it in your body from this life from other lives and and you know you get to replace it with its opposite basically and it's a really powerful modality so i could do it with pendulum and like a more advanced thing is to do it with iet so I'm going to be putting together packages um, for regular tarot readings, meditation videos. And what I'm looking to do is really build a community of people who want to heal, people who want to move forward in their life, people who want to be the best them they can be. And I have the personal experience of being there because the life that I'm living now, and this isn't about the outside world. This is about the interior world. This is about how I feel about myself, how I feel about the world. I don't walk around like a warrior all the time. I don't walk around like, what do you want from me? I don't walk around with uh, this sense of um, the world's out to get me or um, you disapprove of me or I have to twist myself into a pretzel to make you like me. Um, you know, I have self-love and self-esteem and, um, and overall, I'm pretty happy. You know, I have my moments. Don't, don't get me wrong. You know, where I have anxiety, where I have fear. Okay. But it doesn't rule my life. It's a moment. It doesn't rule my life. And, you know, through this energy, I become more intuitive. You know, I become more who I am. I become more who I am, which is deeply comforting and deeply joyous. That's what's happened. So um, I would really love for you to join me on this journey. I'll be putting together packages. I'll have it on another video or I'll have it on my website or uh, I'm not really quite sure yet. Um, this is my way forward. So support me, support you, support us in moving forward into this really incredible, incredible life. You know, I'm so grateful to be alive. I'm so grateful to be alive. I, I didn't really talk about meditation. Uh, I started meditating when I was, uh, after that uh, 
that rehab thing. I started meditating and uh, the attitude that I went in with was, this is not going to work, but I'm determined to like show everyone how it doesn't work. But you know, I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. Uh, my angels and God said something bigger for me. So it was good I showed up. And I'm inviting you to show up for yourself, to invest in yourself, to invest in us. And uh, the, uh, the other thing is it's going to be a community-based thing. So we'll have like once a month through Zoom or something like that where we can exchange and support each other. That's what I'm looking to build. And that's what I hope you join me on. Blessings.